All right, let me guess. Y'all heard about a grizzly bear decapitating a moose with one paw swipe. Yeah, I hate to burst your bubble, but that didn't actually happen. First of all, there have been zero recorded cases of that happening. The statement of a grizzly bear decapitating a moose with one paw swipe puzzles me as to why that is even taken seriously. A bull moose neck is significantly larger than a grizzly bear's claws. Second, bears don't really paw swipe that often, let alone when initiating fights. Even in grizzly bear fights, they don't just magically go decapitating each other's heads or removing limbs with one paw swipe. This isn't an anime, it's real life. If a moose neck was really that weak, then how would it support its huge antlers in its ramming fighting style? That just doesn't really make any sense. You see, the spread of that false information, along with many others in the biology community, has seemingly made moose look like pushovers. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Moose are huge. They tower over cars and humans. So how would a moose fare against perhaps the most fearsome North American animal? Grizzly bears. Well, they're undoubtedly the kings of their territory. They are pretty successful when they hunt because they just brawl and are relentless. There is no beating around the bush when saying bears are powerful. However, that metaphorical bush, well, it also has a uh, bull moose to defend it. These ungulates are not dainty prey, but rather huge herbivores with a mean attitude. They don't tolerate any nonsense from anyone. So, what would happen if a bull moose and a grizzly bear fought one another? Who would reign victorious? Well, let's settle this debate once and for all using scientific data and facts. So, to establish the premise, the fight will be between an angry bull moose and an angry grizzly bear. Let's assume this brawl takes place in a somewhat open forest. You know, to keep things fair using a neutral habitat where both animals are found in. And before we begin, feel free to subscribe for more interesting content about the world around us. So with that being said, let's get this analysis started. Size and Physique the North American Grizzly Bear. This beast needs no introduction. There is a reason why its scientific nickname is Ursus Arctos Horribilis, which roughly translates to the terrible or fearsome brown bear. It rules over the northwestern region in North America. A good concentration of these bears inhabit Alaska, and it gets really cold up there. Thus, they are built to survive harsh conditions. They have coarse fur with thick layers of fat, which make them very tanky. After all, grizzlies are the reason why the term bear mode exists, and they live by the motto, all you can eat. Their diet consists of meat and berries, but they really aren't that picky. Now, when concerning the size of these bears, it greatly depends on their location. A mature male grizzly clocks in between 600 to 900 pounds, and stands around 7 to 9 feet tall. Now, it should be noted that male interior grizzlies, such as the ones in Yellowstone National Park, reach around the 600 pound range. Meanwhile, male brown bears in the coastal region of Alaska weigh around the 900 pound mark. So yeah, grizzly bears are big animals that survive their relentless environment. But if there is any Alaskan herbivore that could make the grizzly think twice before being in the presence of it, it has to be the Alaskan moose. If you think the deer lineage is a pushover, well, then you'd be incorrect. Moose are part of the deer family, and they get monstrously large. In fact, they tower over cars and humans. And just like grizzly bears, their size depends depends on their location. The Alaskan moose, which inhabits Alaska, hence the name, is the largest subspecies. A typical bull Alaskan moose can weigh around 1,300 pounds by the fall season and stand between 6.5 to 7 feet tall. So when comparing the two North American beasts, it's evident that the moose has a decent size advantage. The massive structure and sturdy legs of a moose supports its immense body. In fact, the moose does not skip out on upper body days. Its shoulder and neck are particularly notable, suggesting it has great strength in those regions. This makes sense since they possess a large head crowned with a pair of formidable antlers. It basically carries around 50 pound antlers on its head on a daily basis. 
So, when concerning size and physique, the Alaskan moose takes this. A bull moose is simply a larger animal, so the grizzly is not really winning the size game right now. But don't worry, size isn't everything, right? The fighting style of both of these animals is another factor we have to consider. This brings me on to my next point, which is weaponry and fighting IQ. Who fights better, a grizzly bear or a moose? This is not a simple question to answer since they both are completely different animals that live different lifestyles. Both of their physiques are a testament to their resilience in the rugged Alaskan wilderness. However, they do encounter each other in the wild, so there are physical feats on how they would fight one another. But before we dive into that topic, let's get some simple background knowledge on both of their fighting techniques. The Grizzly Bear. We all know what they're capable of. They favor the brawling and brute force method of fighting. They are master grapplers to say the least. And dare I say they know a bit of wrestling and jujitsu? Brown bears have robust hind limbs built for upright stabilization. This allows them to stand up and grapple for long periods of time. On top of that, their paws are equipped with huge curved claws that can grow around 3 to 4 inches in length in mature adults. Their claws are used for digging, gripping their environment, and of course for brawling purposes. Now, even though they have huge paws, they don't really swipe with them that often, but rather use them for manipulation purposes. And this makes sense given their grappling physique. Grizzlies have a huge shoulder hump which are concentrated muscles specifically built for their upper body and arm movements. This explains why they are good at wrestling and manipulating their prey. And speaking of prey, how they hunt is a bit odd for predators. They don't really stalk and ambush whatever ungulate they're hunting, unlike big cats, because they are just simply too big and bulky. When brown bears hunt, they just go for a head-on fight and try to tire out their opponent with their relentless attacks. Now, how they utilize their strong bite is also a bit odd as well. Bears tend to bite whatever limb or part of the body they can grab a hold of so they don't really target a specific area unless they are mounted on top of their opponents and have easy access to the neck. This type of biting method enables wounds all across the body rather than a concentrated area. Now regarding the moose, they too favor head on brawls as well. They don't mess around either since bulls are very temperamental and are arguably more hostile during their rutting season than brown bears. Moose tend to prefer the ramming and kicking fighting method. After all, they have the largest set of antlers out of any animal in the world, so it's no surprise that they like to use their head as a weapon. They like to headbutt and drive forward using their momentum and huge mass to ram into their opponents. Once in range, moose also like to rear up and kick using their sharp hooves. Their method of kicking is very effective when their opponent is off balanced or on the ground. Now, is that enough to take down a grizzly? Well, since they do interact with each other in real life, there is a bit of a record. However, there isn't a lot of information concerning the interactions between bears and moose. The most reliable source I could find with significant records was a publication made in 1992. The age of the publication doesn't really matter in this scenario, and in fact, it actually might be a more fair estimate on how bears interact with moose. This is due to the Alaskan and Canadian terrain of which the study took place in being less tampered with by humans 30 years ago. The results of the study indicate the mortality of moose by grizzly bears was predominantly calves. This makes sense because carnivores tend to want to go after easier and more vulnerable prey. On the off chance the grizzly preyed on adult moose, all of them were female. This shows that during the time of the study, there were zero recorded cases of bull moose getting killed by by bears. In fact, the only reputable account I could find of a bear quote unquote successfully killing an adult moose was a mutual killing, where a six year old brown bear, which is considered a young adult, died after killing a five year old moose, which is also considered a young adult. A necropsy analysis of the bear after it died showed that it had severe abdominal trauma. This suggests that the moose likely rammed into the grizzly while the bear was trying to wrestle it and injured its internal organs. Now the report doesn't state the 
gender of the moose, but that doesn't really matter since it was a mutual killing nonetheless. In addition to that, the report also claims that brown bear attacks on male elk are not really that successful. Just for reference, bull Roosevelt elk weigh between 700 to 1100 pounds, so it's a smaller ungulate than a moose. And that's actually about it regarding reputable statistics on brown bear and moose interactions. And sure, fighting technique and strength play a big role in brawls, but dexterity and speed is another large factor we have to consider. This brings me on to my final point, which is speed and agility. A bear's build is rather incredible when it comes to stamina and speed given their bulk. They aren't very aerodynamic, and neither is the moose, but what the bear lacks in swiftness, it more than makes up for with endurance. They have a decent amount of slow twitch muscle fibers, which are responsible for exerting energy over long periods of time. In fact, bears have one of the highest amount of slow twitch muscle fibers compared to any large mammalian predators. Its upper body and arm muscles are composed of around 55-63% to 63 slow twitch muscle fibers. This means that they have incredible endurance. In fact, there are recorded cases of brown bears fighting for over 10 minutes. Moreover, when concerning agility, it's actually pretty decent compared to other animals of similar size. They have a good turn radius and are pretty quick on their feet. Now, concerning the Alaskan moose, well, it's definitely not as agile as the bear because, you know, it's built like a refrigerator. But moose do have great stamina, just like bears. They can even match the grizzly in a sprint, topping out at around 35 miles per hour. However, when concerning the overall topic of speed and agility, I would say the bear wins this. As I mentioned earlier, both of these animals are pretty evenly matched when it comes to raw stamina. However, the bear's physique and less mass would give it an edge in overall agility. So, with all that being said, it's now time to determine a verdict. Alright, we have our stats. So, who would win in a fight between a grizzly bear and a bull moose? This would definitely be a hard fought brawl for the both of them, but I would say the bull moose would win with very high difficulty. Alaskan bull moose have a pretty decent size advantage against a grizzly. Now, that doesn't automatically mean it wins, but it does explain why there haven't been any recorded cases of a grizzly bear successfully killing a bull moose and walking away. It should be noted that when grizzlies hunt ungulates, just like a lot of other large mammalian predators, they like to weigh down their prey and try to ground them. This is usually achieved by attacking the spine or by putting pressure on the rear legs of their prey. That strategy would be nearly impossible to do on a bull moose given its tall stature. There just simply wouldn't be enough leverage for the grizzly bear to do so. The fighting style of the moose also counters that of the bear, which likes to wrestle. Moose like to use their body weight to ram into their opponent with their huge antlers and kick using their sharp hooves. As seen by necropsies, ramming into bears results in the bear suffering severe trauma in the abdominal region. Overall, it would be a difficult brawl for the both of them, but I think a bull moose would win more often than not. 